When he got back, the boy was still asleep. He pulled the blue plastic tarp off of him and folded it and carried it out to the grocery cart and packed it and came back with their plates and some cornmeal cakes and a plastic bag and a plastic bottle of syrup. He spread the small tarp they used for a table on the ground and laid everything out and he took the pistol from his belt and laid it on the cloth. And then he just sat watching the boys sleep. He'd pulled away his mask in the night and it was buried somewhere in the blankets. He watched the boy and he looked out through the trees toward the road. This wasn't a safe place. They could be seen from the road, now it was day. The boy turned in the blankets, then he opened his eyes. Hi, Papa, he said. I'm right here. I know. An hour later, they were on the road. He pushed the cart, and both he and the boy carried knapsacks. In the knapsacks were essential things, in case they had to abandon the cart and make a run for it. Clamped to the handle of the cart was a chrome motorcycle mirror that he used to watch the road behind them. He shifted the pack higher on his shoulders and looked out over the wasted country. The road was empty. Below in the little valley, the still gray serpentine of a river, motionless and precise. Along the shore, a burden of dead reeds. You okay? He said. The boy nodded. Then they set out along the black top in the gunmetal light, shuffling through the ash, each the other's world entire. They crossed the river by an old concrete bridge, and a few miles on, they came upon a roadside gas station. They stood in the road and studied it. I think we should check it out, the man said. Take a look. The weeds they forded fell to dust about them. They crossed the broken asphalt apron and found the tank for the pumps. The cap was gone, and the man dropped to his elbows to smell the pipe, but the odor of gas was only a rumor, faint and stale. He stood and looked over the building. The pumps, standing with their hoses, oddly still in place, the windows intact. The door to the service bay was open, and he went in. A standing metal toolbox against one wall, he went through the drawers, but there was nothing there that he could use. Good half-inch drive sockets, a ratchet. He stood looking around the garage, a metal barrel full of trash. He went into the office, dust and ash everywhere. The boy stood in the door. A metal desk, a cash register, some old automotive manuals, swollen and sodden. The linoleum was stained and curling from the leaking roof. He crossed to the desk and stood there. Then he picked up the phone and dialed the number of his father's house in that long ago. The boy watched him. What are you doing? he said. 